It is June of 2024, and the video title is why I'm not using OpenSense. The video title is not titled why you shouldn't use OpenSense. That's not what this is about. I don't tell people what to do. I generally make a lot of tutorials or give opinions on software, and I always have lots of links over in my forum where all the details of why I would use PFSense over OpenSense are going to be listed, and I'll be going over them. They're linked down below. The reason I even bother creating a video titled this is to just reply to the number of people that kind of are evangelizing Open OpenSense. And this is a problem I see throughout the tech industry that is a little weird to me. The Linux distros are an easy example of this where people have lots of back and forth. They go and opinions of who should run what software and like making sure that you are absolutely aware of what software they're running and why you're bad for not running it. And this back and forth continues on even to which editors people use, which creates its own level of debate. And if you use an editor that another person doesn't, apparently they have to comment on everywhere that you've posted that you should be using the one that they like the best. And frequently these posts are lacking in any depth other than you should use what I use. And I'm going to back all these claims up of why I use PFSense over OpenSense. And I'll have all the links, of course, so you can look through those and make your own decision. You can look at those links and read them differently than me and have a different opinion. And I'm fine with that. I don't dislike anyone who uses OpenSense. If you want to use it in your lab, awesome. Go ahead. You want to use it at home. You want to use it for your business. Knock yourself out. I'm not here to tell you you're bad. I certainly don't go around commenting on anyone who says, well, I use OpenSense and tell them they shouldn't. I just tell people I use PFSense and here's why. And you can make decisions for yourself. So let's get started and dive into this forum post. Now, in case anyone's new to the channel or don't know what I do, YouTube is a outlet for all the different projects I work on, not just in my lab or studio, but also the outlet for projects that we actually do professionally at CNWR. CNWR is where we do managed service provider support. So we support many small businesses. Many of those small businesses have PFSense firewalls. We also do a lot of IT consulting. So my perspectives come from real world use case of PFSense, which we've been using for a number of years. And that technical expertise is then offered up on YouTube. So it's a lot more than just basic testing. This is a a lot of enterprise level deployments. We've done a lot of consulting. When I say we, I don't just mean me. We have an entire team of employees and many of them are trained as network engineers and PFSense is among the things they know. It's not exclusively the firewall we use, but it is certainly a popular one amongst that list. And because we have these deployed at clients, keeping firewalls patched is part of the patching overall that we have to maintain at clients for security. And despite OpenSense having a more frequent update cycle, they are slower to get out security fixes. This is where there's always some confusion where, hey, isn't there a lot of package updates for OpenSense more so than PFSense? Yes. Aren't they on a more frequent update cycle? Yes. But it's what they update that really matters. I got a few examples from 2023 that led into 2024. They're all linked here. If you want to look at, see the dwell time for getting some of these done. Now, one of the things that I want to talk about too, and that's me saying that OpenSense relies on NetGate for features and fixes. And yes, that is something that apparently causes a lot of confusion to people. Now, while I recognize from an interface standpoint, their code base has drifted apart since the fork for clarification. When I say that, it's because NetGate contributes a lot back to upstream BSD. NetGate is funded by selling hardware that comes with PFSense Plus or selling licenses for PFSense Plus. This is similar to OpenSense that sells hardware and business license. So they actually both have a very similar business model. But where the difference is, from that income, NetGate staffs numerous developers whose job at NetGate is to contribute code to FreeBSD and continue creating builds of PFSense CE as free. And more important than just the percentage of code that is committed is what code they commit, which of course is lots of enhancements that benefit firewall related features and performance. This is really important because NetGate is one of the top contributors to the FreeBSD Foundation. Sponsored commits, I don't want to sound like they're just sponsoring and throwing money at BSD. Let's get a little more specific here. Putting developers on the staff that are paid to contribute code to FreeBSD. They don't have to do that. They care about open source, so they do that. By contributing to FreeBSD, they can then build things downstream such as PFSense. And by the fact that it's in FreeBSD means OpenSense benefits from it as well, the extra features that we get. So these are the sponsored commits from the FreeBSD Foundation. I've got the sources listed here so you can read through them yourself and uh, dive into it. This is actually a whole long video from the recent uh, Developer Summit. So if you want to dive deep into FreeBSD and NetGate being part of that, go ahead, feel free to watch that video. Uh, the source of this one's at the hour 13 mark. It's a pretty long video. Now to get to a little bit more 
detailed for those of you that go, where's this proof, Tom? Can you show me that? And that's actually pretty easy. We're just going to use a GitHub search over here and look at the code base that builds OpenSense. And you can see all the Rubicon communications, LLC, NetGate, sponsored commits for the code that they pull in. This is all kinds of stuff like the crypto dev code here, the AES, et cetera, et cetera. These are all the upstreamed into BSD that get pulled back down. When I say that they rely on them, they rely on NetGate being a big contributor to firewall related features. And of course, OpenSense being a firewall, they rely on these features and the functions that come down that are contributed to BSD. And of course, this is what leads to the better performance you get out of WireGuard. And this is not a cherry picked post over in the NetGate forums. This is a discussion over over in the OpenSense forums about the firewall, specifically WireGuard code, being so much faster on the PFSense version versus the version that you find in OpenSense. And they're pulling from the same code. Yes, the code that NetGate wrote to bring WireGuard to BSD is the same code they're using. It's just not implemented in the same efficient manner. And there's a lot of little nuance in there that matters quite a bit because, well, if you didn't write the code, even though it's available to you, how you integrated it to your product will make a pretty big difference in there. And that goes true as the FreeBSD Foundation celebrated the fact that Christoph Provost, I hope I got his name proper here, uh, wrote this code that is the OpenVPN DCO. That's awesome. Chris Provost works for NetGate and wrote this code and put it in BSD. They didn't just write the code and stick it in PFSense. They put it in BSD so everyone can benefit from it which also two years later, OpenSense is now going to be benefited from any new release they have coming up. They're going to integrate the OpenVPN DCO. Now there's a lot of little nuance and I grabbed one example here of like the IPsec tunnel with dual WAN failover. Once again, this is a feature that's in PFSense that isn't in OpenSense and it's not something home users would probably ever run into, but it matters if you have dual WANs and you have an IPsec tunnel, you need failover setup. Uh, this is not a feature available. That's why this forum post appears to be completely unanswered in inside the OpenSense forums because it's just not something that is supported currently in OpenSense, but you can do this in PFSense. Now, the last couple notes I have here are about PFSense moving to FreeBSD main. Now they did this, they have a whole blog post on it and essentially they're skipping right to FreeBSD main because this creates less technical debt when they're doing the commits. They don't have to backport them to previous versions. Of course, this means for OpenSense, if they're on the previous version, they have to wait for backports to be implemented to get those latest features. So it's worth noting that there's some developmental differences here from the base of BSD that they're pulling from. Now, those are my reasons for not using OpenSense, but they don't have to be yours. This video is titled why I'm not using it, not why you shouldn't use it. But go ahead and read through those links, make your own decisions for yourself. Matter of fact, while you're there, join my forums, forums.learnsystems.com to have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topics. Like and subscribe to see more content from the channel. Head over to lawrencesystems.com to connect with me on whatever socials I'm available on there. All right, and thanks.